Hey, hey, Blue Table fans! Sean here, and we're going to take a second look at the Age of Sigmar Grand Alliance Chaos book. This is one of the four big Grand Alliances of Chaos and Order, Death and Destruction. Now, I've already done a look at this book, but I've been... This book has been my constant companion for a couple of weeks now. I've literally slept with it on my pillow. It's, like, awesome. I'm, I'm really, really into this. So, without further ado, I'm just going to skim over it and point out some of the more interesting units. So, first off, when you're looking at an Age of Sigmar unit, you've got to look at not only the killing power of the unit, which I call damage potential, like how many wounds could this inflict, uh, like, potentially, and then... The, and then, of course, the stat line that delivers that damage potential, meaning does it hit easily, does it wound easily, and does it have a rend, which is a factor that gets rid of the enemy's armor. So, um, okay, and then the other thing you need to look for is special abilities, and then also synergy. So synergy could be that it affects... Uh, what I call Nova Synergy, that it affects everything in a certain radius, or Directed Synergy, like it, it'll boost this one unit. And within that, there's uh, Synergy that uh, is passive, and then Synergy that's limited. So passive means, uh, the best type, in my opinion, is Passive Nova, meaning it affects an area of effect around the model all the time without you having to activate it. It just does that. Models within such and such get this without ha uh, using a power or using any sort of resource. So anyway, you got Archeon. He's like a giant beat stick with a huge amount of uh, like boosting potential because he allows the other um, general type models to use their command abilities which is absolutely enormous. But he does clock in at 700 points. By the way, I'm going to talk about points even though I don't like points. Because I've been, as I've been looking at this game, I've realized that, ah, uh, boy, because a lot of groups, immediately they just picked wounds as kind of a, a, a de facto point system. And i got to tell you, that is like totally unbalanced. I mean... It is, it, that just, that works worse than the points. So the points are very simplified in this, and I actually think they're a good way to thumbnail a combat, and then you can just go have, go have fun. So Varnguard, those guys are beat sticks. Gaunt Summoner. Um, now we're into Slaves of Darkness. That's the old Chaos Immortals, and they give a battalion here. And by the way, in Age of Sigmar, you purchase your battalions. So it's, it's interesting. It's not just something you throw in like, it's like, uh, you know, if you don't use them, you're going to be weaker uh, because they actually do cost points. And they give three for Slaves to Darkness, which is a lot. Okay, first off, the Demon Prince is a, a remarkable value. Uh, and and a, a good old Demon Prince has always been a pretty awesome thing to use. And there's tons of alternate models for a Demon Prince, tons of conversion ability. That's why the Demon Prince, I think, is one of... Uh, one of the great winners of this book. So you can give him a mark. Um, and I'm doing Nurgle, of course, which gives him a save of 3-up. A 3-up save is pretty rare in this game. 4-up is considered heavy armor. 5-up is kind of average, in my opinion. And then, of course, you have 6-up and nothing. And, uh, of course, he flies. And... You know, it's, uh, sometimes the points kind of fall down. Like, you can have a Demon Prince that walks or a Demon Prince that flies, but they cost exactly the same. So, same thing with mounted heroes. Uh, so, you're going to see a lot of mounted heroes when people start feeling that competitive edge coming in. And so, um, he does heal. If he kills things, he heals. So, that's really a nice feature. And before I go any further, I need to mention something that I meant to at the beginning, which is you also have to look at the list in terms of how fun it is to play. Hold on, someone's at the door. Oh, that's awesome. Got a package. Yep. My, uh, my son dropped his cell phone in the toilet 
and this is the replacement. Isn't that nice? All right, let's keep going. So uh, the Demon Prince is for, uh, so typically for points, a hero is going to cost you 100 to 120 points. And, you, and those are the price points, by the way. It goes 80, 100, 120, 140, 160 sometimes. But 100 or 120 is typically where your heroes are. And that's about the cost of a basic unit of 10 regular guys. And so you've got... Um, so the lower level heroes are 100 points. Uh, excuse me, are 80 points. Uh, rarely do you see them for uh, 60. So anyway, you can pick a, a, a thing, one of the marks there. So uh, Zinch gets uh, to be a wizard. Slaanesh um, can pile in and, oh, it gets like basically a first strike type of thing. Okay, let's keep going. So Chaos Lord on Manticore, he's a giant beat stick. Same with Sorcerer. Sorcerer Lord can cast uh, only one spell, oddly, uh, but he is a booster. Uh, I'm going to skip through a lot of these. So, Chaos Warriors still really solid with uh, two wounds. They are uh, 180 points for 10. And by the way, you have to buy them in groups of 10, so it's really hard to get your army to land exactly on like 2,000 points. Uh, so, anyway, 180 for 10. And uh, basically, they've got an Invuln versus Mortal Wounds, which is nice because you do take quite a bit of... A lot of things inflict Mortal Wounds. That's basically an unsavable, unsavable wound. And let's see... Yeah, that's about it. They just, they got a, they got a good attack line. And, um, and, oh, and they have two wounds. That's the big thing. That's the big news about Chaos Warriors. Two wounds. Uh, Chosen are pretty awesome. They actually, um, they actually boost the guys around them. So they can, let's see, if, the model slay, if they slay an enemy model, you can reroll failed wound rolls for other Slaves of Darkness units from the army within eight inches till the end of that phase. So Chaos Chosen are pretty good to sprinkle them in, and the models are really cool. Plus, you can do lots of great conversions. All right, let's keep going. I, can't, I don't have time to comment on every single thing. Personally, I think chariots are uh, a really good value overall as I was looking at the stat line because the chariots typically cost 60 or 80 points and they have the hitting power, they have the killing power, typically of a good hero at about 20 points less. Plus, they have good movement and they got rid of all the stupid disadvantages of chariots like running through cover and all of those, all of those things. Uh, but they certainly don't have, like in old Warhammer Fantasy, like with the impact hits, a chariot could really break into a combat. Uh, and they certainly don't fulfill that role anymore. In fact, I, I don't know what the, exactly the role of chariots is. Uh, they're, they're like mini beat sticks that move around pretty quick. So I, I'd call them troublemakers. All right, Chaos War Shrine. Can't stop, uh, can't go through the Chaos War Shrine without saying something about it. So first off, a lot of the, the models have asterisks on them, and that means, look at this little chart, and for big guys, the, it gets weaker as their wounds are suffer, uh, as they suffer wounds. So even though their stats are really good, they, they get weaker as the game goes on. That's one way of looking at it. Personally, I think the asterisks are kind of like disadvantages because if you look at the lower end of the table, they certainly are suffering near the end. But I think it's a very much a needed game balance mechanic because these guys, the hitting power of like monsters and stuff, point for point, goes along with the wounds that they have. Meaning, so this guy has 12 wounds. Well, how does he stack up against a unit of regular guys that has one wound each and there's 12 of them? And the thing is, that unit, as the guys die off, they're gonna, their hitting power is going to get less and less. So what they did is they pegged the big guys to the same sort of mechanic as a unit of troops in that they get weaker in certain aspects as you go along. And in this case, it's the attacks of the guys that are carrying the war shrine. But if you look at them, at full strength, it's six attacks with two wounds each. That puts the war shrine at a damage potential of 12 plus four for the rider is 16. So that ain't not bad. That is actually a little beat sticky 
uh, but it is 200 points, but that's not why you get the Chaos War Shrine. Chaos War Shrine has protection of the Dark Gods, which means in a certain radius that goes down as the game progresses, uh, they, you basically get a 6-up uh, invuln save to all the units within a range. So, let's see. Roll a dice each time a mortal model from your army suffers a wound. So model versus unit is a big deal. Model is actually weaker because it means the model, you can't just have one model in range and the whole unit's getting the benefit. So the bubble is pretty tight, but it does go out nine inches, which is really good. And quite frankly, if you're playing an army with a lot of big guys, not like swarms of like little things, which is typical for chaos, this power is actually really, really good. And I think, I think the War Shrine is a really good force multiplier. Plus, it also can beat things down. Also note that single models don't take battle shock tests. They're not going to lose wounds or run away. Uh, and then you can uh, make give it a mark, basically, and then he can give powers to different things. Around favor of Cahorn uh, gives one in it, one unit. Reroll hit rolls of one for that unit. They're not incredibly powerful, but it's really nice. So Chaos War Shrine, I think, is, is really a solid thing to put in an army. Knights, spawn. Oh, spawn. Why won't they get the spawn right? These guys are still not that great, in my opinion. And here's why. Because their to hit and wound is four up, no rend, so that's as, that's as vanilla as vanilla can be. Oh, but they get two dice, six attacks. Yeah, but it's only seven attacks with one damage each on average. And that's just not, that's not really looking very good compared to just buying regular guys. Uh, you can give them a mark, but it doesn't give them any abilities. And if you roll a double when determining the number of attacks, they get uh, three up, a wound characteristic of three uh, three up instead of four up. That's pretty weak. That's, uh, there's only a one in six chance of it happening. There's no flexibility. I really don't like Chaos Spawn, especially when you compare them to the good old Beast of Nurgle, which costs exactly the same. Uh, the Beast of Nurgle has uh, less, less attacks, not by much, but a better stat line for those attacks. And they get really cool tactical abilities. In fact, let's look at Beasts of Nurgle right now. This is, to my mind, when you look at it in terms of it, is it fun to play? Does it augment your force? Because you can make a force and like pick the most damage potential guys per point, you know. And but it wouldn't necessarily be fun to play. It would be like, okay, I'm I'm killing things. But a tactical army that has different abilities, that has great synergy, that grows in powers. You position your guys right. That's going to be fun to play, and it's going to be fun to play against because it's going to challenge your opponent to think about your army next time. He's going to go home and think about how to defeat you for the next time. And to me, that's, that's a symbol of a good game right there. So these guys have the ability, they're 60 points, so pretty cheap. You get six wounds. By the way, instead of a spawn, instead of five wounds, five inch move, a little less than the seven inch move of the spawn. Uh, let's see here. Five up save, five up save, exactly the same. And, uh, okay, but they have the ability Attention Seekers, which is they can charge in the same turn that they ran or retreated. So these guys actually are faster. And they have Slime Trail, which means if, a, if models charge them and they end up within one inch of them, they uh, suffer a mortal wound on a six. That's awesome. That is going to kill guys. These guys are just going to pick away at the enemy force throughout the battle. I'm using them as troublemakers to go out and just handle different threats. So big thumbs up on Beasts of Nurgle. So Chaos Spawn, sorry. They're just, and they're not even fun. They're so, uh, why won't they do it? Okay, I'm going to do a separate review on the, uh, the Cohorn Bloodbound. By the way, that's the way I say it for those of you who are new to the channel. But the models are absolutely amazing. There is, I think there's one guy in here. No, I think it was Zinch. Yeah, it's Zinch Demons. So these guys are actually pretty scary. Uh, they are very killy. Sk Skull Reapers. Awesome.
<laughs> I believe that was their, their second choice of name for that unit. Okay, so now we get to Demons of Corn, and these guys, as you imagine, they just they run across the battlefield and just whoop things. Okay, so first off, Scarbrand. In my opinion, in a Demons of Cahorn army, this guy is an auto-include. He's awesome, great name, great model. Oh, just an exquisite figurine for this, for this force. So this guy captures, in my opinion, the, the essence of what a Cahorn army should be. Is he has, he has a fury level so if he's non-combat, he's at maximum fury level. Here, oh, excuse me, rage level. It goes angry, furious, seething, enraged, and incandescent. Come on, that's awesome. Incandescent level. So this guy, oh, and he's, the model, he's just all beat up. His wings have been tattered. Apparently he was like thrown to earth by a cahorn. So this guy is great. He doesn't fly, by the way. He's 400 points, bow, yeah. So, in so if he's not in combat, the combat phase before, he's now incandescent. And then, as he suffers wounds, he gets like more, he gets more angry. angry. So, total carnage is one of his abilities. Uh, let's see. So, roll a dice each time Scarbrand hits a target with the Axe of Carnage. Okay, this is great. If the roll is greater than the result on the table, or excuse me, greater than, yeah, that's right. The hit has caused total carnage, and one enemy model in the target unit loses eight wounds or is slain. No saves can be taken against total carnage. If the roll is less, then he still does damage. So total carnage, when he's incandescent, is on a one plus. It's automatic. It means every wound he does, multiplies into eight wounds for just that model. This guy is a stone cold killer. He deserves to lead your demons of Cahorn army. Awesome. Then of course you have the three different types of bloodthirsters, no comments about those. I'm gonna be doing videos on like the different things. Uh, so, inter okay, Skull Taker, and by the way, when you do Grand Alliance Chaos, this is your book. You can take anything from this book, Skaven, Minotaurs, all this stuff just bands together to form one giant army that you can take. And it has the full allegiance abilities and everything of a specialized army. It's good stuff, guys. So, um, so Skull Taker, his damage potential is 9, which is great for a hero. He costs 100 points. He's very moderately priced. So, and the thing I love about Age of Sigmar is your heroes aren't killing your points total. It doesn't cost like a huge amount of money to get the heroes in your army. And they're pretty cool. And they work really, I believe the monsters, the heroes, and the individual units are very balanced against each other. You won't have like, you know, hero hammer. I don't believe you will at least. Because the units of guys can stand up against uh, the hero types. So here it is. He has three attacks. Great stat line. 3-3 three, three, minus one rend. Decapitating strike. If the hit roll for Slayer Sword is six or more, the blow inflicts three mortal wounds instead of its normal damage. That's awesome. Uh, you can reroll failed save rolls for Skull Taker. That gives him one of the best saves in the game, which is a four up rerollable. Awesome. Skulls of Corn, you can reroll all failed hit and wound rolls when Skull Taker targets a hero. Perfect. This is a perfect model. Definitely take this guy. There's a great Forge World model that could stand in really well for him instead of this kind of corny, you know, over the top uh, Liberace looking guy. So, Bloodmaster, let's see, Blood Throne, where are we? Blood Letters are pretty cool. They're, they're just good basic infantry, 100 points for 10 of them, and uh, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good. I'm going to be talking about summoning, by the way, because I have an opinion about that. Uh, awesome. Skull Cannons, one of the few ranged things in this, in this book. It only, it only does, has one attack at 30-inch range, D6 damage. But remember, you can shoot in close combat. That is a huge deal when you're analyzing these, these models. So basically, uh, let's see here. 
If the skull cannon's gnashing mock caused any wounds in the combat phase, at the end of that phase you can make a burning skull attack as if it were a shooting phase. That's where this guy is really strong, is that if it kills something in close combat, it gets to shoot that cannon an extra time. And I think that's, that's it. Pretty, pretty decent stat line. And again, not hugely, oh, I don't have a, a cost for that there. Never mind, I think it's 120 points. Zinch RK Knights is basically just a couple of entries there. Demons of Zinch, they deserve their own video. I mean, there's, there's so much to these guys. I think I actually already did a, a vid on these, but one thing I did notice is that the Exalted Flamer, point for point, is the same as getting Flamers of Zinch, except Flamers of Zinch, as you kill them off, their, the power level goes down. So this guy has the killiness, wounds, everything, as two of these guys. But if one guy dies, this is the only one left to attack, whereas this guy takes two wounds, half his wounds, he's still going at full strength. So by the way, there are a few slightly off things about the book in terms of points and power level and the whole thing. Uh, screamers are pretty cool. They're very fast at 16 inches. They definitely play a battlefield role. Don't leave home without them. Pink whores, initially I thought they were the worst, but they are actually one of the best units, and that's because you can use their magical flames, pretty basic attack, but you can still use it in, in melee. They're 140 for 10, which puts them at one of the more expensive types of units. Let's see, where am I? 20 minutes, good. Uh, but, but, here's what it is. They are Chaos Wizards. The, a unit of whores is a Chaos Wizard. They do not grow weaker as they go down in number. So one pink horror can still uh, be casting spells as if it were a wizard. And they can summon themselves. Meaning, so summon, uh, all the demons have summon whatever they are, right? So, but that means, what I've heard is, and it makes sense to me, is you have to have a unit of that on the board. So you can't have a Chaos Wizard and no demons on the board and start summoning demons. Because the thing that gives him that ability is on the demon's paid uh, War Scroll, but the War Scroll doesn't affect unless you actually have that model on the board. So uh, Pink Whores can summon themselves and get this. If you use the rules from the White Dwarf, where it gives War Scrolls for blue horrors, if you have any blue horrors on the table, and by the way, they come in units of two, they're cheap. If you have any blue horrors on the table, all of a sudden the pink horrors gain the ability to split into blue horrors, just like old times. So every time you kill one of these guys, two blue horrors show up. And quite frankly, I think for that reason, this type of army, a Zinch army, is A, fun to play, and B, characterful, and C, is going to be really tough to beat. I guarantee it. I'm already working it up. Hoping to have that army done by Valhalla. In fact, yeah, I need to get to work on that. Oh, there's my phone. Well, we'll just have to let that ring through. Okay, what I love, I missed it, but the, but the formation that you get, called a battalion, Change Host of Zinch is fantastic. You need a Lord of Change and then eight of all whatever units you have. Okay? Deceive and Dismay is the ability. Nothing is ever quiet as it seems when fighting against Zinch. In the blink of an eye, the foe you're fighting will shimmer and disappear. Okay, so hold on. It, this gets good. In each of your hero phase, you may pick a pair of units from the, this battalion that are within 27 inches of the battalion's Lord of Change. The pair of units will swap places. Awesome! Simple ability, captures the essence of the army. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, by the way, I think the winner here not only is Pink Horse, but it's the Chariot. Dude, get lots of burning chariots of Zinch. Great model, comes with extra figures. So like you get the Herald or an Exalted Flamer as an extra. Great value for the points. Okay, Rotbringers, I've already talked about them. I'm, I've built an army, I think you've seen it by now. So I'm just going to skip right over the rot bringers. Demons of Nurgle. Uh, nothing much to say. Epidemius is a pretty cool force multiplier that does cool things, just like before. Uh, plague drones, I actually think aren't that great, but the models are really cool. Uh, but, you know, they're not fast. They're not particularly 
Uh, awesome. Beasts of Nurgle, I think, are great. I'm running them. Nurglings are one of the more interesting things because they regenerate. Every turn, if any of them have taken wounds, they go back up to full wounds. And since they have four, you're looking pretty good for that. And it's 80 points for three swarms of those. Okay, uh, Slanish. Not going to spend a lot of time on Slanish. This is the one that I read the le less, less of. But they're just what you'd expect. They're extremely fast. They're extremely fast, lightly armored, cheap. And they basically, you can kill them real easy, but they are inexpensive. And they're fast and they hit hard. So... There it is. Um, Herald of Slanesh on Exalted Seeker Chariot. I have this noted for some reason. Oh, after this model makes a charge move, roll a dice for each enemy model within one inch. On a roll of four or more, that model's unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Okay, this is phrased really interesting. 160 for this one. Is that if you charge, and let's say you get within five, with one inch of five different models, you roll and they, they can suffer D3 mortal wounds for each model. That is a chariot. Hits hard and does a lot of damage. Cool. I mean, look at the wheels on that. Okay, the, the interesting model that you might throw into any army is the Mask of Slanesh. And here's why. Uh, let's see. Unnatural reflexes. Where is it? Infernal choreography. It is impossible to stand still while in the presence of the mask etc etc enemy units that start their movement phase within 12 inches of the mask of slanesh have their move for that turn so that is this is board control right here herald of slanesh has something interesting what was it reroll failed save rolls chaos wizards nope I, I, I don't know why i marked that for being interesting okay let's let's move on uh, oh, yeah, one of the great winners of the book, I think, oh, I'm doing that old thing where we're analyzing it according to the points, not according to what's fun. Well, actually, I am analyzing it according to what's fun. Is Hell Striders of Slanesh. Great models, by the way. So these guys are 100 for five of them, so really inexpensive. They got two wounds. So it's the same as a Chaos Warrior, basically. Uh, but they move so fast. They have a 16-inch move. And let's see. The banners. They, there's two different types of banners. I think this is what it is. Uh, you can re-roll the dice. Oh, no, no. It's enrapturing banner. Here it is. Uh, cut from luxurious silks, blah, blah, blah. Subtract one from the hit rolls of enemy models within six inches of a unit that contains any enrapturing banners. Okay, the phrasing, I think, I, I don't know, it seems like this is ill-phrased to me, and it may be FAQ'd, but the way it's written right now is if you're within 12 inches of two of units of these guys, you are now minus two, because it's cumulative. It doesn't say within 12, six inches of any units of Hell Striders. It says within six inches of a unit that contains any enrapturing banners. Well, any means, you know, one, two, three, because you can put banners on every single guy, by the way. A weird thing about Age of Sigmar. Uh, so that's about it. Th these, these guys are great, uh, like, board manipulators. Okay, Furies. All right, loving the Furies. Definitely going to be including some of them. It's 60 points for a unit of them, so they're, they're pretty cheap. Uh, not too bad. And um, so, but here's the cool thing about the Furies. They, they, oh, they have two very basic attacks. Not too bad. But they have Shadow, uh, Prey Upon Terror. Roll a dice every time an enemy unit fails a battle shock test within 12 inches of any Furies. So that means it doesn't matter if they're within 12 inches of six Furies. It's not cumulative. So, on a roll of four or more, an additional model from the same unit is pounced upon and devoured by the Furies. This is a sort of it-adds-up things. And these guys, you just run them around. They're very characterful. You run them around. You don't get engaged. You might pick off some stragglers. But these guys definitely have a role in your army. The published models are terrible. They're like 14 years old. So that's why you want to do conversions. You want to have B2B do conversions. 
Demon Prince uh, is appears twice in the book. So nothing more to say about him. Great value. Uh, Soul Grinder, uh, don't have anything. He's just basically a big beat stick, but has great ranged weapons. And do note, uh, Soul Grinder single mod is armed with a fearsome harvester cannon, piston-driven legs, and a hell-forged claw, and, and can spit a horrific phlegm bombardment. So he gets both of his ranged weapons. That is a huge deal. That makes the Soul Grinder one of the better, possibly the best ranged thing in the book. Uh, yeah, 280 for that one. So he's an investment, but he's great. Lasts a long time. 16 wounds and four up save. Oh, that soul grinder. He's grinding. Okay, Bellacore. No comments on Bellacore. Uh, Beastmen are pretty straightforward. Pretty much just, you know, not much to say about them. I do think the Tusk Gore Chariot is a pretty good value, but the model is old and crusty. It's absolutely terrible. I would uh, get the boars from the Orc Boar Boy kit and do a conversion. Or, uh, way back when, I don't know if you can look this up, but I did a conversion where you would take an ogre uh, Morn Fang and put the, put a, oh my gosh, what was it? A Bestigore on it, and then have the Ungor just kind of running alongside it. And that would make a Tusk or Chariot. And I think it's a great conversion. Uh, and so if I do Beastmen, which I will, my plan is to do every single Age of Sigmar faction that there is. I think there's like 50. Warherds. So this is a sub-army of the Minotaurs. Minotaurs have great models, but they really are just beat sticks. Nothing to say there. there there's really not any synergy to them, as far as I know. Uh, same thing with Sigor. Uh, nothing really, like, weird about him. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. There's like something exceedingly weird about him. Soul Eater can attempt to unbind two spells in the enemy hero phase. So he's a frontline beat stick that can unbind spells. Awesome for the Cygore. And let's see. Okay, Monsters of Chaos. Things just got interesting. All right, I'm about to unveil what I think is the coolest creature in this entire book. And by the way, two of these are going in my army. Uh, and I'm using the Cockatrice model, which kind of looks like that. Senegors, blunt. Razorgors, blunt. I mean, the Senegors, and I'm glad, because the models aren't that great. Chaos Warhounds, same things as always. They're a, they're a really fast <coughs> throwaway troublemaker unit that is cheap. Harpies, get Furies instead of Harpies. Harpies do have 16-inch move rather than 12-inch move, but they are not great. They have the same ability as the Furies, but it's only on a six, so uh, not that great. Jabber Slythe, here it is. A weird model, nobody really even thought about it. This model is terrible, good laws. Just take something different, do a conversion. Uh, I know I am. I, for the time being, I'm using the two, uh, two Cockatrice models for two Jabber Slice. At 180, here's what you get. Uh, 10 wounds, 5 up save, nothing to write home about in terms of a monster creature. His damage potential is pretty good. He's got a slithy tongue, which actually hits on a 3, wounds on a 3, and has a minus 1 rin, so pretty good for 